We are pretty excited about Easter at Victory Weekend. We have, we have themed it this year undefeated because we believe that we can have victory in Jesus every day of our lives. So we're inviting you to an undefeated Easter weekend at Victory Church. We have four services that weekend that you can come be a part of. So Saturday, 4 and 5.30 as well as Sunday, 9.30 and 11. Uh, We also are doing something a little bit different this year. We're letting the adults in on the Easter egg fun. So we're going to have Easter eggs for all of the adults. We're going to do a a golden egg uh, during the services. So you might win a a date night package. You might win just straight cash, homie. You might might be able to participate in it. Yes, we do have Easter eggs uh, and a hunt for each one of the kids after each one of the services. So uh, you're more than welcome to come to one or all four. Uh, And also we are bringing back by popular demand our student egg hunt. So what we did last year, there you go. What we did last year is we know that you like candy, but we know you like cash even more. So our student Easter egg hunt is just cash. So in this field over here, uh, we have eggs and we have, uh, they're, they're full of, now some have quarters, some have 20s. So last year, one person walked with like 50 bucks. So um, he found a couple of the prize eggs. So Easter weekend at Victory, we cannot wait for you to come. It's a great weekend to, to invite a coworker, uh, to, to bring a neighbor, a friend, uh, maybe somebody in your family that needs to come back to church. Uh, we want to put together a great weekend. And uh, we believe that with Jesus, we can live undefeated. Amen. Well, today, again, we are celebrating 25 people being baptized. It's an amazing thing to see uh, that type of energy, that type of public uh, confession that Jesus is their Lord and that they're, uh, that they're proud. Uh, it doesn't mean they're perfect, but they are moving forward. They're progressing. I remember when I got baptized, uh, I was a 14-year-old, um, a, a bit shy uh, super skinny. Um, I mean, if I turned sideways, you wouldn't be able to see me. I was just, I was thin. Um, I hated being called skinny. I was also incredibly insecure. How many remember when you were 14? Okay, you want to journey back to when you were 14? It's kind of one of the most awkward times of your life, you know, because you're just kind of figuring out like, you know, I like girls. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, all those, all those weird emotions taking place. How many of you had to battle with, uh, with a bad complexion? Raise your hand. Here you go. So you're like, man. So I had all these insecurities happening. But the thing was, my family was kind of going through a struggle as well. Because I grew up in a single parent home where my mom worked two jobs. And so when I was getting ready to be baptized, um, I kind of realize this now, I didn't then, but almost every baptism story starts in the middle of a scene of a struggle. Now, you may not realize that you're either in a struggle or you're preparing to walk into a struggle, but I believe almost every baptism story starts in the scene of a struggle. Sometimes that struggle is is preparing itself to manifest. Sometimes you know you're in the middle of a struggle and you're just trusting God that he'll come through in the middle of that struggle. Because when I was baptized at 14, I began to trust God. That I said, I don't want to just have a a one-day faith of saying yes to Jesus one day. I want to have an everyday faith in him. Because over the next several years, um, I I would grow. I didn't get any uh, heavier. It, It wasn't until after high school I started to work out and try to put on some weight. But at 18 years of age, my mom was diagnosed with spinal cord cancer. It was inoperable. Uh, therefore, it was pretty much a, you know, a, a very different way of life for her until she was eventually promoted to heaven. Uh, many people ask, um, you know, how, how, do you, how do you battle that? You know, how do you uh, process that in your mind? Well, I believe she has the ultimate healing. And so that's where I, I, I choose to place my faith in that, that, that you know, we're, we're on earth for a moment and then we get to celebrate heaven for eternity. And so she has the eternal promotion. But while we were going through that struggle, my mom's faith became the catalyst to my faith. And then watching her faith as she walked through, you know, probably one of the fiercest battles ever, became a catalyst to why I stand on a platform like this because my mom, in the middle of this hell on earth, chose to do something that most people don't. Because you know this, that when life interrupts you, that when you walk through battles on earth, you either run from God and you blame Him, or you run to God and you embrace Him. My mom ran to God. And in the middle of that struggle, my story started. See, God would know that he had plans for me. 
And in the middle of that struggle where my story started, he knew I would need to tap into his strength. Because he knew that there were going to be plans that he had for me that I would not be able to lean on my own strength. I would need his strength. And so my baptism story started on the scene of a struggle. So for a few moments this morning, I want to share with you in Acts chapter 16, a baptism story that maybe you've never heard. Maybe it's been a while since you've read. Because I want to communicate this kind of main idea to you today. You can still be who God wants you to be before you know what God wants you to do. You can still be who God wants you to be before you know what God wants you to do. You see, I remember being, and many of you do as well, 16, 17, 20, some of you are 30, 40, not knowing who God wanted me or what God wanted me to do. But I know who God wants me to be, and I want to communicate that to you today. So if you have your Bibles, we're in Acts chapter 16. Uh, if you're new to victory, um, next week's message will be longer. Uh, if, if you're a regular attendee, this will be a shock to you, about a 10-minute message. So you ready? Okay. You're like, really? Okay. Acts chapter 16, along about midnight, Paul and Silas, many of you know Paul. Paul was an author of the bulk of the New Testament. Paul gave his heart to Jesus. He had a life-changing experience. He became a disciple of Jesus and began to really uh, talk about Jesus to people like me and you. So that's who Paul was, and Silas was his wingman. Paul and Silas were at prayer, singing a robust hymn to God. So they're singing songs to God. Everybody kind of, that's, that's kind of no big deal. You know, why is this important? Well, here, here's why this is important. The other prisoners couldn't believe their ears. Paul was in prison. Uh, the reason why Paul was in prison was because he was preaching Jesus saves. That God sent his son to be our savior and he'll forgive your sins. And the religious community, the, the, uh, the, the people in that area, they didn't want to hear anything about Jesus. And so they threw Paul and Silas in prison. Yet instead of commiserating, instead of uh, being frustrated about what their faith was doing to them, they were celebrating God. And so in the middle of the night, where most of us would be complaining, they chose to do some celebrating. They, they chose to say, we're going to worship God in the middle of our circumstance. Uh, not, they're not worshiping their circumstance, they're worshiping the God behind their circumstance. Oftentimes, don't we do this when, when it seems like life gets a little bit crummy? We, we feel like, oh... And we just kind of stick our head in the sand and feel like, you know, we just want to ignore everything. Well, Paul and Silas were like, we're not going to do that. We know that we don't want to be in prison, but we're still going to celebrate the God that we love. Maybe God has a plan. Maybe God has a plan that we don't understand. Oftentimes we feel like this, that when God is silent, we feel like he's absent. But God's silence is not an indicator of his absence. God's silence may just simply be, I'm waiting to speak to you until the perfect situation comes up where I, can where I can show you and I can reveal to you my glory. So Paul and Silas are in jail and they start singing. The other prisoners can't believe it. Then without warning, a huge earthquake. The jailhouse tottered. Every door flew open. All the prisoners were loose. Started from sleep, the jailer saw all the doors swinging loose on their hinges. Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he pulls out his sword. He's thinking, I'm going to kill myself. Like my job is to guard people and I'm not doing a very good job of that because all the doors just swung open. He's about to do himself in, figuring he was as good as dead anyway, when Paul stopped him and Paul says, don't do that. We're all still here. Nobody's run away. There'll be times when you find yourself in a circumstance that maybe isn't ideal that you begin to realize, wait, God is up to something. Just because you face resistance doesn't mean that you're outside of God's will. Sometimes that resistance will reveal itself to be God's will. And so here you have Paul and Silas in this situation and all of a sudden they've turned their celebration into an opportunity to do something incredible. So the jailer got out a torch, and he ran inside, badly shaken. He collapses in front of Paul and Silas. He led them out of the jail, and he asked this question. Watch this. Sirs, what do I have to do to be saved to really live? In other words, he saw Jesus inside of Paul and Silas. He saw the lifestyle. He saw that even though they were in a situation that was not ideal, that God inside of them was very, very real. And so he begins to say, what must I do to be saved? And so Paul's going to pounce on this opportunity. Paul says, put your, entire, put your entire trust in the master Jesus. 
then you'll live as you were meant to live and everyone in your house included. Now today, as we celebrate 25 people being baptized, you need to know this. They're going to stand in this, in this baptism tank full of confetti. First service was ridiculous. I also say this, if you're being baptized this morning, this water is super refreshing. Now, you may choose to say it's cold. I say refreshing, okay? But just because they stand up here and they have their moment on the stage and you stretch your hands and you clap for them and you pray for them, it doesn't mean they're perfect. Because oftentimes we feel like as soon as as soon as, you know, people get baptized or as soon as you stand up here and proclaim your faith in Jesus, you know, you can begin to walk on water like Jesus did. No, what it means is they're progressing in their faith. When, when they stand up here and they say in front of all of our church family and your family that they're accepting of Jesus as their Savior, what it means is they trust God every day. It means they're going to grow in their faith, but it doesn't mean that they're perfect. They're simply progressing. I remember when I got baptized, I didn't have everything all figured out. You, you, you don't show up when you're 15, 16, 17 and feel like you're already a pastor. But you begin to work things out and you begin to get more and more mature. Now some of you wives, you're waiting for your husband to get there. He will eventually. I don't understand that. But you, you, you pray that you'll begin to progress in that area of your faith. See, I remember when I first accepted Jesus as my Savior, that was a big deal for me. But I found out there was something more. As you read Scripture, the reference Jesus as your Savior is about 35, 36 times depending upon your translation. So we say Jesus is our Savior. There's about 35, 36 times in this Bible. But there's another title God gave His Son, and that's Jesus as Lord. And that means that He's over every area of your life. That title, Jesus as Lord, is mentioned thousands of times in Scripture. So you go from just having a Jesus as my Savior to Jesus as my Lord and Savior, where He's over every area of your life. So when Paul talks to this jailer, he says, put your trust in Jesus. Then you'll live as you're meant to live. Then they went out to spell out every single detail, the story of the Master. The entire house, the entire family got in on this part. They never did get to bed that night. It was a party. How many of you remember those parties where you never did get to bed? Okay, you remember those? Okay, it says, it says they never did get to bed that night. They were partying all night long. All night long. <laughs> don't, don't. Honey, I think that if you closed your eyes, me and Lionel Richie sound very, very similar. I'm just saying, like if you were to close your eyes right there, you might have been mistaken. Like, is that Lionel? Oh, oh it's you. Thank you. You're, you're too kind. Oh, oh, not. Nice. So real quick, we got, we got to move on. I got, I got like three minutes. After first service, our sound guy, he does a phenomenal job. He walks up and goes, hey, there's no button to make you sound like Lionel Richie. Just wanted you to know. Oh, man. man, he, he kept me real humble. And he said it with a straight face. It's like, all night long. All right, here we go. They never did get to bed that night. The jailer, now watch this. He just gets saved. He just gives his heart to Jesus and watch what he begins to do. The jailer made them feel at home. He dresses their wounds. And then he couldn't wait till morning. Was baptized, he and everyone in his family. Isn't that incredible? First service, we had people that had that the entire family got baptized together. Second service, we have people as, as a family unit getting baptized together. That's the most exciting thing to see because you get to celebrate together. There in his home, he had food set out for a festival meal. It was a night to remember. We say this often at Victory, and it's so important for you to remember this. The world parties to forget. Do you remember those parties where you would party to forget? You had a week that was crummy. You had a week from the pit of hell. And all you wanted to do was enjoy St. Patrick's Day without conviction. Okay? Some of you, you're like, oh, was, did he see me last night? Some of you, you really would, would, would go celebrate. You would really just go party because all you wanted to do was party all night long. You wanted to forget your life for a moment. 
The world parties to forget, but the church parties to remember. To remember what God has done. To remember and celebrate His grace that He's given to you. The Bible says it's the gift of God that no man can boast. We receive this mercy. We receive this forgiveness. We party to remember. Some of you in the room that you've already been baptized, I want you to use this day as a day to remind you of when you were baptized. To allow that refreshing to happen in your life. To allow that to be a reminder of when you got baptized and let that renew your faith. Let that set a fire inside of you to, to maybe shake off that stale spirituality and begin to say, God, I want to I be bright for you again. I want to be celebrating what you're doing in my life. He and his entire family put their trust in God. Everyone in their house was in on the celebration. You can still be who God wants you to be before you know what God wants you to do. I want to take just a moment, and before we uh, bring the worship team back up and begin to celebrate uh, baptism here, second service, I simply want to ask you, have you said yes to Jesus? Some of you in the room, maybe you were 10 or 12 and you don't remember what that was, or maybe you haven't found a home church that you actually look forward to going to. I was talking to a guy first service and he goes, I've never seen anything like this. This was really, really cool. Are you guys always this excited about Jesus? And I said, uh, yeah, yeah, because he's the foundation of my life. He's not the crutch. He's the ground I walk on. And so I said, yes. And he goes, I, I need more of that in my life. So before we go back into a, a moment of worship and we baptize some people this morning, I want to ask you, and we're not going to embarrass you, highlight you, make you stand up or do anything crazy. Have you said yes to Jesus? Ha ha have you said, I place my trust in you? I want to take just a moment before we do baptism and ask you that question. Would you bow your head just for a moment with me? Uh, really nothing spiritual about bowing your heads. It's just simply a time for you to focus on your faith. So... This morning you'd say, Andy, it's been a while since I've been in church, or it's been a while since I've seen a church excited about their faith in Jesus. And to be honest, I haven't placed my faith in Jesus. I want to do so this morning. I want to say yes to Jesus. I don't know what all that means, but I'm willing to start. The Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings, for God delights for the work to get started. So you'd say, Andy, I want to say yes to Jesus. All I'm going to ask you to do is put a hand up and you can put it back down. All right, I see that. I saw it. Thank you. Anybody else this morning, I want to say yes to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, here's what I want to do. I'm going to pray with you this morning. And at the end, I'll say amen. And all you have to do is say amen with me. And those of you in the room that you've already said amen and you've already accepted Christ your Savior, you're going to say amen with me. But today, in Jesus' name, I pray for those handful of people, four or five people that said, I'm ready to say yes to Jesus. I don't know what all that means, but what I do know is that I need a Savior. And I thank you that God sent His Son, Jesus, to be my Savior. I place my belief in Him today, and I confess my sins, that I'm a sinner, but by grace I can be saved, and my sins can be forgiven. I declare today, God, that I need you. Lord, be my foundation. Allow the grace that you have for me to give me hope. Make today the first day where I remember why you created me to have a relationship with you. This morning, God, reconnect the disconnect and bring joy into my life. In Jesus' name, and we all say together, amen. Let's celebrate that this morning, amen.